I'm Amber and this is my next hobby. This week I've got a Christmas themed video for you. I am going to be talking about how I spent the last two months making these fruitcakes. I got this book back in October, Dessert Person by Claire Saffitz. I pre-ordered it, you know, it got delivered to me and I was super excited flipping through the book and came across this recipe to make fruitcakes. In like the little introduction of the recipe it talks about how if you're reading this in December and you want to make this, you're, too, you're out of luck, you need to have started these in October. It was October, I decided to go for it because of course why not pick the most complicated recipe to test out the first thing from this cookbook. So this video is going to be kind of part recipe review, part just kind of documenting and bringing you along my journey of making these two fruitcakes. At the end we're going to go ahead and taste it and I'll kind of talk about about the whole experience overall and you know my thoughts on the recipe. Um, I'm gonna have a secondary video uh, talking about some of the other recipes I've done from the book and kind of a more overall book review. This one's just gonna focus on the fruitcake recipe itself. So first we're gonna kind of flash back to October when I started this project. Um, the first thing I had to do was gather all my ingredients. Um, this is definitely not a cheap recipe. These cakes are like packed with uh, dried fruit that you soak in brandy. The recipe originally called for Grand Marnier was kind of the recommended alcohol of choice to soak the fr dried fruit in. And that was like $40 a bottle, and I was already probably like $50 deep with all the other ingredients. I was not trying to turn this into a $100 cake, so I want something a lot cheaper, um, just like a generic sort of brandy. Other than that, like putting together the cake itself wasn't too bad. I was able to find all the ingredients for the actual just inside cake part itself really easy. Everything was at the grocery store. So I'm gonna be mixing all the fruit together with liquids to hang out overnight. So we're gonna let this sit until tomorrow when I bake up this fruitcake. The baking wasn't too bad either. This makes a ton of batter. Like these are such dense cakes that like, I have a six quart mixer and it was like, it wasn't struggling, but like it was so full that if you have a smaller like mixing bowl, you might have problems. You might have to mix this in batches or something because it was struggling a little bit to not just like dump everything all over while I was mixing this up. buttering the pan with like a room temperature thing of butter and it's just like way too floppy in my hand. I don't like it. So I have to butter it, stick in the parchment paper, and then butter it again. If nothing else in this project, I have learned that parchment paper is my enemy. I think that one's pretty good. I don't really know. I don't generally line cake tins with parchment paper, so we're gonna hope for the best. So, I've got my pans all prepared after realizing I needed a second layer of parchment paper around the edges. Now I need to prepare all my dry ingredients. Some all-purpose flour.
We had to go to literally four different stores to find this diamond crystal kosher salt. It was ridiculous. And then when we finally got to the store that had it, we couldn't find it like where we thought it would be and had to have like a manager help us find where it was because I thought it was literally gonna cry if we had to go to another store to find this friggin' salt. One thing I really like about this cookbook is that it's got all of the measurements in uh, like ounces, grams, and like cup measurements. I used to be more of a person that like measured things with cups, tablespoons, whatever, but since I've gotten into doing sourdough, I've definitely started favoring doing things by weight, so having the freedom to, you know, choose which way I'm feeling like cooking today is really nice. Interesting, interesting. It smells good. Get this into here. This is so much fruit. Nope. Some run with, oh my gosh, how am I even supposed to mix all this? This is absurd. I think if you had like a smaller mixer, mine I believe is a six quart, you would have a very hard time with this. You'd probably have to dump everything out into a separate bowl instead of being able to mix it in the mixing bowl like I am trying to currently. Jeez, oh man. So I feel like this is about as well mixed as it's gonna get. Um, we'll kind of see as I'm pouring it out into these pans, if I need to kind of scoop it back into the bowl out of the pans or something. I don't know exactly. It's just really hard to tell with this volume of batter whether it's been fully mixed or not. Okay, so did a little bit of cleaning up because this whole vicinity was a mess. And now we're gonna get this fruitcake batter into my prepared pans, and then we gotta bake it. This stuff is absurdly thick. I mean, I guess like I know like fruitcake should be this way, but dang. Butter itself tastes pretty good though, I will say. I'm not, I mean, I'm not trying to get salmonella or anything, but. 
ahead to give it a little taste test. So I'm gonna use this scale so I can try and get these as even as possible, so that way the, like, it doesn't really bake differently. Okay, so these are pretty much identical. Yeah, so I'm supposed to push down the middle a bit more than everything else. That way it rises more evenly. I wish there was like a photo of this to kind of illustrate because I'm not totally sure how big slash wide slash deep this depression is supposed to be in the middle. My hands are so sticky right now. I would say those are shallow wide depressions in the middle. We're just gonna roll with it, I think, and hope for the best. So I'm gonna stick these in. I was gonna grab them both at the same time, but it is legitimately too heavy to carry these one-handed. The other! Stick these babies in the oven. So, my fruitcakes baked. We took them out of the oven. They've been sitting here cooling for a couple hours. There's maybe still a teensy bit of warmth going on, um, but I'm ready for bed, so we're gonna go ahead and get these finished off. I don't know how many holes I'm just supposed to poke in this. I just had to poke it with a skewer. Okay, we're gonna dump our booze on this one. Um, so after the initial baking, you cool the cakes, you poke it with a bunch of holes, and then you dump a little bit of brandy on it. And then the part that takes two months is you repeat that process uh, at once a week for two months. So that was pretty straightforward. It was a little difficult for me to remember uh, to feed them every week. So it definitely got a you know day or so late once in a while, but it was pretty straightforward. The one issue I kind of had with this stuff was that it was really hard to figure out a good way to store these cakes because they're wrapped in the parchment paper that you baked it in, wrapped in foil, and then you need to put it in some sort of airtight container. I lucked out and remembered that I had this big cake carrying case, and that definitely was kind of the only thing I had that was big enough, so you might struggle with like just your average size Tupperware might not fit this. But that was okay. The only other issue I had was that because the two cakes were stacked one on top of the other, the one definitely started to crack more because I had to like pick it up and move it and then move it back every single time. Nothing too exciting happened. Part of me was really anxious through the whole time um, that it was gonna like get moldy or something, but I had no problems with that, thankfully. Hey, it's November 1st. This is our first week of fruitcake feeding. Um, so this is gonna be at the fruitcake home for the next two months. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get these unwrapped and feed it some brandy. It still smells really good. Well, it's a fruitcake. It's maybe a little like tackier. Trying to like get the edges because I know it's all gonna run towards the middle since it's kind of like sunk in in there. It's definitely much slower absorbing now since it's been like sitting out versus when it was like fresh baked. Ooh, they still smell really good. Still just looks like a fruit cake. I feel like it's maybe sunk down a little more in the middle. Very dense, kind of tacky, presumably from like the booze being poured on it. And there's Sophie attacking boxes. Hello friends, it's week three. We've had no power for most of this afternoon, so I'm just now getting to feeding the fruitcakes today. Ooh, these smell really good this week. Ooh, there's a little bit of a crack going on here. Probably just from like handling and stacking and unstacking these, which isn't ideal, but what can we do? I'm trying to like pour this slowly so it doesn't all just pull in the middle. Ooh, it's more crackly. Interesting, interesting. This looks about the same. I feel like the cracks have been growing, which like mildly concerns me, though I guess they mostly seem to be superficial. Still looks, I feel like these have gotten maybe like a little bit darker, but they aren't 
significantly changed. And then we get to this weekend where I actually finished the process of making these fruitcakes. It was bad and not the fault of the recipe. It was like mostly me just personally struggling. Um, so you've got your baked cake, it's been fed the brandy for the two months. Then you do a layer of jelly, a layer of marzipan, and then this royal icing. So the jelly was fine. I just bought, you know, a jar from the store that was totally cool. This is supposed to cover the top and the sides. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be messy. I should have put something underneath this wire rack. Oh my gosh, this raspberry jelly smells so good. I'm gonna make a PB and J after this. But the marzipan, so. I could not find it in any of the grocery stores we looked at, we were looking online, we found a store that supposedly carried it but then didn't, so we ultimately, I opted to make my own. There's like a ton of different marzipan recipes, and there were some that had egg whites, some that had high fructose corn syrup. I opted for high fructose corn syrup because ultimately my goal was to be able to keep one of these until next year, but I think that was probably a mistake, or there was something, there was some sort of issue with my marzipan recipe that it just did not work at all. Like, I full on had a meltdown. It was bad. I had like rolled it out. I got the marzipan mixed up. That seemed okay. Like, it made the dough just fine, and then when I was rolling it out like I couldn't get it to the right size like it seemed too thin and then then I like went to like flip it over from the parchment paper onto the cakes to cover it it was just like pulling apart it was sticking to the parchment I tried like scooping it up off the parchment to lay it on top and it was just like shredding in my hands it was so bad I was trying to kind of like patch it which kind of helped but ultimately it was just like this is a mess it is what it is I just kind of had to go with it because I have no marzipan I have no other options I had a little bit of almond paste left which is what I had used to make it and they're just wasn't enough to make a whole new batch, so I just kind of had to double down with what I had. Got it okay coated. It wasn't a, you know, completely tight seal, which is why I'm not going to save one of these for next year anymore, just because I don't think it's food safe enough, totally sealed, that I would feel comfortable doing that. So once I got it, you know, coated as best as I could, it had to sit out overnight. You're supposed to flip it at some point between this whole dry time. I, you know, got it flipped. It seemed okay, except when I went to peel off the parchment paper, the marzipan, had, like the jelly had soaked through the marzipan. It was just all sticking really bad again like it was just more marzipan meltdown like it wasn't good because I had no extra marzipan to be able to even like patch those holes so it just kind of like it was what it was I had to go with it um so after the marzipan was on here as best as it was gonna get uh, I had to make the royal icing This went surprisingly well. I had never made royal icing before, but it whipped together really nicely. It was this beautiful marshmallowy looking mass and it dried really nicely on here as well. I was super happy with how that turned out, so I was able to hide all of my marzipan failings underneath this beautiful royal icing, which I was very excited about. I had kind of wanted to like pipe it or something, but just because I was dealing with trying to cover like all these different like chunks and missing spots of the marzipan, I really didn't get to do that. I was trying to make sure none of the jelly and stuff was getting mixed with the royal icing on the outside and like making it weird that it wouldn't sit out and like stay you know edible as long as I wanted and then I just had to wait for the royal icing to dry um, I gave it 24 hours and we are just kind of hitting that mark this evening so I think Jake and I are gonna go ahead and dig in and taste test this recipe I'm super excited to try it he's a little more nervous than I am and then I have to figure out what the heck I'm gonna do with all these fruit cakes each of these are 20 servings uh, we do not need that much fruitcake so I'm probably gonna be like doing some porch drop-offs among friends and family to try and get rid of all this since I unfortunately won't be able to save one of these. Ooh. Ooh, I see the J 
jelly. And it's, that kind of worked. That's a very, oh gosh, I'm making a mess. Mm. All right. It's crazy how hard that icing is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it's good. I really like this. Yeah. I, I really I really didn't know what I was expecting. So Yeah. Yeah, I've ne also never eaten a fruitcake before, which is probably a big gamble to like be like, yeah, I'm going to commit to making this for 2 months that I've never even tried any version of this thing. But I really like this. It's like very dense and very like rich. So I can tell why this is like 20 servings because you really only need like a very little bit of this and you're like satisfied. There's probably just as much fruit in this as there is like actual the cake batter, which is crazy. I like sweets and stuff, but I can't eat a lot of like super rich stuff and I like, I think I'm like, I hit my, <laughs> I hit yeah. my I'm good point. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it is very delicious. I would definitely eat more of it. You have no choice, you're gonna eat more of it. <laughs> well, good job. Thank you, dear. Mm -hmm. I know you had a lot of troubles, but uh, at least at the end of the day, it tastes good. And I will say, I was like, I didn't know if it was going to be overly sweet between like the royal icing and the marzipan, but I feel like the cake itself isn't overly sweet. Like the fruit is, but it's got like a lot of like, I don't know. I just feel like it balances out very nicely. Yeah. I feel like you don't really taste like super strong alcohol either. No, I think, and like the book mentions that because it sits for so long, like the harshness of the alcohol mellows out, which I was like, I don't know if I fully believe that because it's not like you're cooking the alcohol off, it's just sitting there. But yeah, it definitely mellows out. You still definitely get a flavor, you can taste it, but it's not aggressively so because there's like a lot of booze that got dumped in here, so. And so that was my fruitcake journey. Um, thanks for joining me. Would I do this again? Maybe? This was not a super cheap recipe. The first part wasn't too bad, like feeding it, like I didn't really mind doing all that, but the finishing steps with the marzipan and everything was definitely a real bummer for me. I guess if I could find like store-bought marzipan or if I had a recipe that I knew would for sure work, I would consider trying it again. Maybe do a redemption video next year or something, but we'll see. I would say if you definitely want to challenge yourself and you're not familiar with these methods, this is a really good way to do it. I think it could also be really cool, like, whenever we're allowed to have, you know, fun holiday gatherings. Again, this would be a super impressive thing to be able to tell everyone that you spent two dang months making this fruitcake. I'm happy I tried this once. I don't know for sure that I would do it again. Thanks for watching this video. Um, I'm glad to have had you along on my fruitcake journey. If you've ever made your own fruitcake, comment below. Maybe you have a different recipe that I could try next year that would be a little uh, less overwhelming for me. Don't forget to check out the other video where I talk a little bit more about the book and some of the other recipes I tried and kind of give a more comprehensive review. Uh, I would say it's definitely worth checking out if you are at all into baking at home. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope you have a happy holidays, whatever holidays you might be celebrating.